couple things for today. One, Maddie and I were on a coaching call and we were working with a person who is a former competitive swimmer and he is trained in competitive visualization. You know how athletes visualize performance and I have expressed, I share this process and I use Michael Phelps as an example, but something came together as we were coaching and Maddie in the moment created a little tool. And so part of the visualizing, you start the day with intentionality and you start the day putting in your brain what you want to be today you know, what's your best self? Most people don't do anything. They get up and they get into the treadmill. The two parts of the day you control the most are the first part and the last part of the day. And whether it's ancient wisdom or modern performance science, the, the training is to set in your mind a picture of what you want that day to be. Now, of course, for a competitive swimmer, they're going to visualize the race and what that optimal performance might look like. If it's high stakes, they'll not only visualize the race and the performance, but they'll go through potential things that could go wrong. And when I work with somebody that's in a high stakes situation, we go through a process called WHOOP, and it was developed by a Harvard psychologist by the name of Gabrielle Ottingen, and it's wish, outcome, obstacle, and plan. So that's what Michael Phelps does. In the process of something high stakes, part of what rehearsing does is that your practice, if something goes wrong, you don't automatically go into that fight or flight state. That's why doctors in the ER trained over and over again, something comes in on a Friday night in Parkland Hospital when there's a gang fight and someone comes in with a gunshot wound, the doctor doesn't say, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? They just go into execution mode. One of the biggest challenges I find in project teams on capital projects is that when a problem comes up, they act as though they've never seen this problem before. And yet, every project you go on has the same top 10 issues that go wrong. Somebody can't meet a schedule. There's a safety issue, site conditions, whatever it is. So think about these kinds of things with the teams you work with. And every project team I go with, I have them identify on the front end, what are the things that are likely go, to go wrong that always go wrong? And now let's put a playbook together. Let's rehearse. Let's create some roles for this. Now, all of this is in the category of simulating what real life is going to be like, rehearsing it. So when it comes to Genius Spark, we start out with the image of your paragraph. That is your performance criteria. If you consider the fact that we're all performing even now. And now it's a matter of how are we performing? Am I showing up prepared? Am I present? Am I engaged? All of those things. So after this session, if I wanted to take the time, I could go back and replay and look at highlight moments where I was off my game and compare it to my paragraph. All of that serves to keep programming your brain and helping your brain continue to dial in, get clearer, get more confident, become more intuitive and instinctive, and function more in real time. So with this swimmer yesterday, it just brought all that together, and I added another piece to it that I'm going to start using. In the evening, there's the reflection time. And I'll go through the genius flywheel in just a second. But in the morning, I reinforce 
by reading my paragraph. And I did that this morning. The second part of the flywheel is rehearsing. So I looked at the calendar and just asked, how am I going to show up at my best in these meetings I've got today? Now, I'm not taking it to the extent of a Michael Phelps because I'm relying on something called the reticular activator. That's the part of your brain that is scanning the horizon behind the scenes for what you really want and what will kill you. And your brain prioritizes this because it's your survival. Your brain is also the largest calorie consuming organ in the body. So anything that doesn't kill me and anything that I don't want is just background noise. You've experienced both of these phenomena in terms of the brain focusing on what will kill you and what you want. So I want you to picture yourself on a country road, driving down a two lane highway, and there's this large 18 wheeler in front of you going about 20 miles under the speed limit. Now you've been talking with your friend the whole time. It's been easy to do, but now You've had it. You want to drive by this 18-wheeler. So what happens to the conversation when you decide to drive by the 18-wheeler on the two-lane country road? It ends. Yeah, it ends. And you cannot continue it. You just can't. Because the brain has shifted gears telling you this is life and death. We're going to focus our energy here. Now, another part that you've experienced is that desire mode. How many of you have had something that you really wanted, car, vacation, whatever it is, and in the weeks before a decision was made, you began to see more examples of those on the road. I remember for a while when I was really keen on the Ford Explorer and I would point out to, oh, there's one. Now, again, that's the same mechanism, filtering in the things you want. And that's what we're harnessing. In other words, we're biohacking the brain using performance science. So when you set the criteria, and I've got several versions of my genius portrait, and the one I read today what I put in chat GPD a, a while back and I said, you're Nick Saban and I'm coming onto your team. I want you to coach me to be my best self. And it's pretty direct. And hearing it in the third person and hearing it in different voices helps the brain continue to stay fresh and dialed in on that. Now, the next part is the rehearsal. And that is asking the question, how am I going to show up? So those are the two elements. Reinforce, set the criteria, the intentionality. Second, rehearse, how am I going to show up in these contexts? And think of yourself as a cognitive athlete. We compete on our wisdom, our knowledge, our ability to respond in the moment, our adaptability, all those things. Now, the third piece, not the final piece, but the third piece is the reflection part in the evening. I set aside about 30 minutes every night, and I review the day. I use it to do three things. Gratitude, reflect on my highlight moments of the day, and then look at the next day and dial in and plan the next day so that when I get up, I'm just in execution mode. I'm not spending any time trying to figure out where do I start. Now, when I reflect on those genius moments, I am just cherry picking a few of the highlights where I was in the zone, somebody responded positively. Yesterday, I had a workshop with a longtime client advertising firm. I know them well, and it just hummed. The whole workshop hummed. So I went back to some of those moments where they got excited. And then I went back and asked myself, which of my traits or strengths activated in the moment, came alive? 
So the important thing that's happening is I'm linking the feeling, the moment, everything, and then I'm training my brain by telling it this is what came alive, and it's going to remember that. And then the next time it'll spot it more easily. And then the next time it'll become more instinctive. And with this swimmer yesterday on this instinctiveness, I asked him because of he's got achiever as one of his strengths. And he's a project manager for a large company and they do lots of projects and big projects. Now I asked him, have you ever been on a project that you knew early that this was going to be a disaster? And he said, yes, achiever knows. And I said, what'd you do about it? I knew I had a weak team and I waited about eight weeks to see what would happen. And then I changed out the whole team. Now, this was the aha moment for him. I said, okay, if you continue to review events like that, you won't wait eight weeks the next time. And I said, I've gotten to the point where when I feel it immediately, there's a magic part of your strengths and a survival part. And when it hits, I don't necessarily say it's going to be a disaster. I start going into, okay, let me get more information here. And I've got the same strengths. I've been a project manager for a long time. And when it doesn't add up, when my gut says something's not right, I will say, Okay, you say it's going to be done Friday. Walk, just walk me through the timeline. Where are you going to be Thursday? Where are you going to be Wednesday? Where are you going to be Tuesday? And then you start finding it falling apart when you start going down into that next level. So what he took away were a couple things. Oh, if I rehearse this, if I add this to my repertoire, because he reflects every day, he does the, how am I going to have my best day? He's done it for years as a competitive swimmer. And then Maddie came up with this. You can begin rating each of your strengths by how strong it was, how effective it was, and how instinctive it was in that moment. And you can start giving it a rating. And now that's giving the brain even a bigger reference point and training it. And that's what swimmers do. If they want to shave a couple seconds off the time, they'll measure where they are halfway through what where they are three quarters of the way through. And then that's their leading indicator of where they're going. So Maddie created a little matrix. It's a scorecard with that person's five strengths, a little description of the magic piece of it and a five point rating. And it's on base camp. You can get it. So that was the cool thing from yesterday. You mentioned three things, how strong, how effective, and what was the third Rex? How instinctive, how much in real time did you act, act on it? Good. Thank you. Yep. This is the core foundation of Genius Spark. We've simplified it to the point of all we're looking for, all I'm looking for is who I am at my best, how I get in my way. And I want to know what Joseph looks like at his best how he can get his, in his way so we can work better together and I can have a bridge to communicate when we're misaligned. That's the whole thing. And if you get teams and organizations to begin sharing and getting to know each other better and begin language back and forth, then you can break away from the old style of just learning more about strengths and more about the theory and more about all of that, which doesn't change behavior, doesn't improve relationships. I've had clients want to go deep dive into learning all about the strengths and all about the collisions and tell me all the collisions. So I know the collisions and what to do about it. There's just too many. You're just not going to learn and memorize it. Now, what you can do is if I'm working with Susan, for example, and I have a bad encounter, you know, it just didn't go well. We were off rhythm. She was dancing to a different song than I was dancing to. And I stepped on her toes and all of that. All I need to do is do what we call a bridging exercise where I give her my trait worksheet. That's my five strengths. 
And then it's the choices, the eight traits for genius and the four choices for kryptonite. She gives me hers. And then I just walk through which of the traits do I see when she's at her best? What does it look like? When it's not working for us, which ones give me the hardest time? And then we bridge the two. So how productive would it be to also reflect on which one of my strengths went to the shadow side? So the process, we start with what I call a share and compare. I would share my genius. Here's what I think my genius is. Then you would share what you think, what you find and why. Some of it may be the same. Some of it may be different. Then we reverse roles. Then I'll go into, Joseph, these are the things that tend to get in my way that I watch out for that I'm looking for help with. And then I'd open the door. Which ones get in your way? And are there others that you experience that get in my way? So that's the share and compare. I was thinking, though, more in that reflective time that you were talking about, where you reflect on uh, those three items. How productive would it be for me to look at also, hey, listen, my activator just went to the shadow side. My achiever was really strong, but my activator ruined the whole show kind of thing. Yes, that's part of my practice too. And I typically pick something that really goes off the rails. Part of it is you could spend all day doing it. So I cherry pick the high moments. I look at something that went off the rails and like game film, I replay the fumble drill, what it felt like, where it got. And, and in some cases I come back and say, I need to repair that. In other cases, it's just a learning. And when we have conflict between others, we do have a worksheet that takes you into a much more reflective mind before you go into the conversation. If it's just a speed bump type of thing, we just use the user trait worksheet. But if it's true conflict and sometimes needs mediation, we have another reflection guide that walks you through that. Hey, Rex, mm -hmm. just got one quick thing. When we talked last week, you said something that really triggered me, and that was sometimes it isn't just one trait. It's two or three. It's like a cocktail. And like I've got a client that is a lot of stress and can't shut it down. You look at it, they got focus, they got achiever, they've got, I'm trying to think of the other four of the five when put together, absolutely intensify. And while I can say, Hey, just take the weekend off. That doesn't resonate. What are some, some thoughts around helping them reduce that anxiety or that stress? Yeah. Usually it is a combination of strengths on either side. Now, Maddie, we've got an individual who has that kind of cocktail. And we went to GPT and she created a story about another character that had these traits and how the office would respond. And so sometimes putting it into a story form makes it easier to digest. The person's nickname in the office is Dennis the Menace. When Maddie and I debriefed, one of the things I said, you can tell how stressed that person was because of how much they talked and how much room they took in our session together because they're not ready to deal with this. So Maddie went off and said, maybe there's another way we can do it in a story form. So we're exploring and experimenting with all kinds of ways to do that. So the other part of it too that we recommend is creating what we call feedback culture. That's the fourth leg in the genius spark flywheel it's reinforce rehearse feedback i typically start out getting feedback from friends and family friendly feedback they fill out and pick as many traits as they think apply what they think you look like at your best and tell you why and then how you get in your way and then tell you why and take 30 minutes to hear it when we're in remedial mode, and I, I do have a case study with somebody was in a PIP, a 90-day, it better get better or you're out of here. Brilliant person, context, analytical, deliberative, activator was in there, and there was a fourth green. The problem was this person had a terrible bedside manner. If they thought an idea was stupid, she'd call you an idiot. If the same problem came up again, context, 
so she got kicked off that project team. And when I met with her the first time, tears and I'm going to lose my job. She's a single 55 year old. What am I going to do? All of that. And the first step was let's narrow this down. Let's narrow down what we're trying to accomplish here and we can get through it. So I had her give this, the trait user worksheet out to her peers. I said, find people you're comfortable with who are colleagues, friendly to you, but know you well and get feedback. All five of the people she sent it to sent back one particular trait in Activator. You tend to act and speak before you think. So we took this big problem, narrowed it down to one thing. And then the next question was, where does this happen most often? And she said, meetings. I said, okay, now we've got an item we can work on and we've got a place where it happens. Let's look at a strategy. So the strategy we came up with is take notes, write, so that your mind is focused on the writing, not the speaking. And then before you say something, write down two or three bullet points that you're going to stick with. She started doing that. Within 30 days, her supervisor sent a note back. What happened? This person is completely different. So the success for her was getting feedback from people she was comfortable with and then using that to see what's the pattern. How do we narrow down the field of war here that we're battling against? And she's happy. And we did the more high stakes simulation for a wedding she needed to go to for her son, who she hadn't seen in 10 years and lots of family drama there. And she was afraid the old her was going to pop out. She'd say something, her son would regret it, and it would be a disaster. She really feared that. So I had her on a daily visualization program on wish, outcome, obstacle, plan. The wish is that her son would be happy that she came. The outcome is that she would be cordial and collegial to everybody, no matter what the trigger was. The obstacle was the baggage, the di divorced husband, her, how others felt about her. And so then we did the plan. And the plan was visualizing being cordial and, and gracious under any condition. And she did that. And then I got some great wedding pictures back from her. She was elated. This is really, this reprogram the brain, creating the new story, giving it a new image, is the science of transformation and growth. And it is the road back to the five-year-old we left behind. The value of the Clifton Strengths is it's a validated assessment that measures the strongest parts of your brain, which you naturally do best and enjoy most. And so now that gives us a foundation to begin to reimagine. Where we break off is we say, great. Now what we want to do is create that picture of your best self and how you get in your way. Stop there. And that's why the program we have gets you up and running faster, makes you effective immediately. And when you leave a client, they can walk away saying, ah, I think I can do this or most of this. All right. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Spread the word. Become a better version of yourself today. Think about it and enjoy your wins.